Welcome back. Online activists are uh, actually the international manhunt for Luca Magnata continues. But could the accused killer be disguised as a woman? Toronto Sun columnist Joe Warmington had an exclusive interview with Magnata back in 2007. Well, Joe joins us now live via Skype from Toronto with the details of that interesting interview. Good morning, Joe. Brian, uh, you're doing a terrific job. It's a very shocking story, but it's an important one, and it's good the way that the Sun News Network and the whole team is going after this one because it's going to be really interesting to see how it shakes out, and I think it's going to happen fairly soon. Well, you were kind of at the beginning of all of this. Uh, I guess what people want to know, Joe, is when you were sitting in front of this guy, what did you feel from him? Because obviously there was something there then, but what did you see from him? Well, I thought he was somebody that was in bad need of mental health uh, intervention. Uh, I thought, you know, he was a narcotics user, kind of a, a wing nut. I didn't dislike him. I felt sorry for him. I think that that might be one of his charms, Brian, that he uses. Um, he he didn't have a great personality, very monotone, hardly blinked, uh, that kind of thing. He had a story for everything and a lot of uh, uh, feeling sorry for himself stuff. And... Mm. Uh, I, I, in retrospect, uh, you know, we did try to get him some help. I phoned his, his agent at the time and suggested that he needed some help. But, uh, you know, I didn't ever foresee something like this. Joe, just so we can remind our viewers of what uh, precipitated you having an interview with this uh, man, can you tell us what led to your contact with him? I was listening to the radio the night before, Brian, uh, and he actually phoned in on a radio show. And just, just a caller in talking about it. his name was Luca Magnot and his life was ruined because of the Carl Homolka uh, people having rumors, uh, spreading rumors that he was involved with her. And I thought, at the time, I thought that you know he was maybe a boyfriend of hers. And of course, she just got out of prison and that would have been a big story for us. So mm -hmm. I, I tracked him down through the internet and then he wanted to do the interview, but he wanted us to come to him, and I didn't feel comfortable. So I had him come into the Sun building, and a lot of people have come up to me this week and remember him sitting there when we interviewed him in what was the cafeteria in those days, and they thought he looked like Paul Bernardo or, uh, or Billy Idol. I asked him about the Paul Bernardo connection, and he kind of uh, had this uh, shy or, or sort of grin or smirk, if you will, but... Uh, well, you have Again, to, you know, yeah, you have to wonder there, Joe, if that type of association didn't appeal to his, uh, you know, desire for notoriety or fame. As oh, it, yeah, as there's it no were. question about it that I, you know, we believe that everything about him on the internet, all the, the Facebook pages, all the aliases, the multiple personalities, everything, is created about himself. He created it, you know, for himself. So mm. he'll put up something about uh, Luca Magnata and then have somebody else commenting on it. So he's commenting and talking back and forth to himself, creating this myth. The thing is, they got stepped up in the last year with the kittens business, and there's a lot of people that were fighting to find him. The London Sun, our colleagues over there, did a terrific job of tracking him down, interviewing him at that stage, and they contacted Scotland Yard, Brian. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, very clearly, he you know plus uh, crossed over the lines. In our case, he was talking about things that were uh, bizarre. Uh, I just didn't know what to make of him. I thought he needed help. And uh, I talked to his mom last night. Uh, yeah. She hung up a phone. I can't understand why that they're not out more out front trying to help police and the media and the social media track this guy down and get him into a hospital and fast before mm -hmm. someone else gets hurt. Well, they've certainly gone to ground with all the fame that, and notoriety that this individual has drawn to himself due to the alleged nature of the crime. But here's the thing, Joe, when you, uh, you know, this is going back five years now, 2007, and I know you cover a lot of stories, you, you're on top of a lot of things, but when something like this happens and, you, and you sit, you're sitting there and you're looking back now, do you ever think, what, what ever happened to this guy if I'd just gotten hold of him or if I'd uh, followed up on him yeah, in I some way, shape or form? Yeah, I've thought about it a lot because, you know, if it was a, a few weeks removed, I'd re be feeling worse because, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, but it's five years removed now, Brian. But, yeah, I I wish I maybe had stayed in better touch with them and that kind of thing. I, I You're right. I'm pretty busy. I go story to story and I go at it fairly hard and it's a lot of water under the bridge since then. But I have thought of this guy over the years and uh, wondered whatever happened to him. I hadn't heard anything. And... Uh, I guess I was naive to think uh, 
or maybe look for the best in people. I, again, I didn't dislike him. Yeah. Uh, I felt sorry for him. Joe, there's a, a time for a final question here, and it's simply this. You know, you hear the cliche that I looked into his eyes and I saw nothing there. He had dead eyes. He has that look yeah. on his face. Uh, was there any of that at that time yeah. back in 2007? Yeah, he looked right through me. Mm. I was just a vessel for his game. I wrote about that in my column, if anyone wants to read it, in today's Toronto Sun or torontosun.com. Uh, about the game Ripper and how the main character was Christopher Walken, whose name was Magnata. I think, and I'm not a, you've had experts on the show, maybe you can ask some of the, you know, the ones you have on later, but I think he's playing a big game, and I think it's uh, derived from this video game and all the other pop culture movies like American Psycho and Catch Me If You Can and uh, things like that, Dexter, all of it. Yeah, well, Joe, I don't think you're off base with that at all. I mean, I think I come to the same conclusion as well. Listen, my friend, it's always good to talk to you, and I thank you for taking time out. I know where you are, and, and uh, it's a good thing you're doing, so you take care of yourself. You too, Brian. I appreciate that, and uh, I think you're doing a terrific job here, as you always do. Well, I appreciate that. You take care. All the best. Thank you. That's Toronto Sun columnist Joe Warmington and his encounter with the alleged killer, Luca Magnato, and he joined us live via Skype in Toronto. Mm -hmm.